one of the fun things I do in my book is I begin the first substantive chapter with about about 15 quotations, if you trace, uh, if you go from the front page into the footnotes, where prominent scholars say things like most of America's founders were deists, um, or at least many of America's founders right. were deists. And they define deism as I just defined it, right? A, a clockmaker God who created the universe and then moved away from it. Certainly the, a God who does not intervene in the affairs of men and nations. Now they say, most of America's founders were deists, but then what they do is they inevitably latch on to the six or seven that we know well, of Franklin, the four who became president, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, sometimes an Alexander Hamilton, and usually a Tom Paine. And then they look at these individuals and they say, look, these are not Orthodox Christians, and therefore the founders were deists. Now, let me just suggest, hopefully, if you knew nothing about deism before now, you would latch on to something and say, wait a minute. Um, one could be uh, have a heterodox position on some tenets of theology and not be a deist. For instance, one might reject the um, incarnation and yet still believes that there's a creator God who intervenes in the affairs of men and nations. And if you believe that, you are not a, a deist by definition. And so what I do is I run through these seven individuals and show that really none of them are deist. By this definition, all of them speak with some regularity about God doing miracles, God intervening in the affairs of men and nations. Someone like George Washington does it something like 240 times in public documents and private documents. He's always speaking about God's providence. And so he's not a deist. And then I go even a bit deeper and I say, do we have any evidence whatsoever that George Washington and James Madison are not Orthodox Christians and Alexander Hamilton? And the answer is no. We just simply don't have evidence. Now you can point to Alexander Hamilton. He had an affair. It's true. He had an affair. That's a bad thing to do. We ought not to have affairs, but that doesn't make one a heretic. That doesn't make one a deist, right? Um, as well, I point out that these founders are an entirely unrepresentative sample. By the end of their lives, all of them are worshiping in the Church of England or the Anglican Church with one exception, John Adams. Um, that's that's almost all the sample, but only about 15% of Americans in this era were, were, were Anglican. 50 to 75% were Calvinist, and only John Adams is a representative of that uh, population. He's not a good representative. Madison or Adams clearly rejects Orthodox Christianity, as does Jefferson, and so he's not a good representative of Calvinism, but most of America's founders would have identified themselves as, as one stripe of Calvinist or another, and most of them looked much more like a Roger Sherman than a John Adams. So I, I'm very careful not to argue that most of America's founders were Orthodox Christians because we simply don't have the information about many of them. Uh, but those that we know something about, their theological views, their religious views, someone like a Roger Sherman, there's no question that he is, in fact, an Orthodox Christian. There are some heterodox Christians running around there. By my count, you really have two deists, I think, Ethan Allen and Thomas Paine. And Thomas Paine isn't even from America. He's from England. He comes over here. He does some good stuff. But then he goes back to France and he writes The Age of Reason, a deistic work. And he's vilified in America because of that work. Americans had no patience with deism at that time. Yeah, that's helpful. And I do appreciate about your book how you don't fall into that error that I see so often is where they'll take a Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson and they'll kind of cherry pick some quotes and try to argue them into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, when just the reality is while they were, they were probably far more sympathetic and far more influenced by Christianity than a, a secular, um, maybe someone from the left might argue. Uh, they certainly, as you said, we're not Orthodox Christians, but that doesn't undermine your argument that they and the founders were influenced by and trying to instill Christianity and Christian principles into how they founded this nation. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. And I give a number of very specific examples of way in which I, I think this occurs in the founding era. And many of them, or at least some of them, fly in the face of Enlightenment ideas, right? So the, in, the Enlightenment had a positive view of human nature, and um, they had a very high view of the intellect. And so what Enlightenment political thinkers tended to want is a very strong central government run by the educated elites. America's founders would have nothing to do with it because they believed, as John Adams, as James Madison put it, men are not angels. 
men are sinful or men are self-interested. And therefore, we want a constitutional system characterized by a separation of powers, checks and balances, federalism, and on and on they went about the importance of avoiding concentrated power. And we certainly aren't going to count on education as making someone um, uh, into a moral person. They were not against education. They were for education, but they would have no patience with the idea that a bunch of PhDs um, should be given all political power and allowed to control the United States of America. That would, that would be a recipe for disaster and tyranny. Yeah, I think in the book, uh, I don't know if it was yours or a quote, but you mentioned how, you know, if men were angels, government wouldn't be necessary. And if we were governed by angels, the checks and balances wouldn't be necessary. But uh, they they were influenced profoundly so by their theological beliefs that man is fallen and sinful, and they governed and set up our government accordingly. And I think that was a really helpful insight that I took away from the book is seeing just one, how different that is from from like an enlightenment point of view or even really um, a secular point of view today that sees people as basically good and attempts and I think fails uh, to govern out of that belief. Whereas you recognize that uh, the best of men are men at best, it, it causes you to approach the question of civil government much differently. You know, I think that's exactly right. And let me point out the quote we're talking about comes, we're paraphrasing it from Federalist 51, written by James Madison. James Madison was so intensely private about his faith. He seemed to have been a pious young man. He stayed at the College of New Jersey, now Princeton, for an extra year, presumably to study for the ministry. But then after that, we know almost nothing of his faith. And so I make no claim about him, that he's a deist, that he's an Orthodox Christian, that he's a good Anglican. But nonetheless, Madison clearly understood that humans are sinful or self-interested, if you prefer. And if you read something like Federalist 10, Federalist 51, um, it shows the genius of the founders to figure out, okay, how are we going to create a national government that's strong enough to do what we want a national government to do, and yet also ensure that it doesn't become a, a, a tyranny, it doesn't become tyrannical. We certainly are not going to trust people. And this is one of those examples where I think everyone in America benefits from the fact that we had a, a Christian founding because atheists, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, all of us like not living under a tyrannical government. And it's because America's founders were influenced by the Christian idea of original sin that even redeemed humans continue to battle with the old man within, that we have a constitutional order that works as much as we're frustrated with it. Um, it's not a tyranny, right? And that's a really good right. thing in the scale of, in the scheme of world history. Yeah.